Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm picking up where I left off, it's still the 23rd of February, and what I'm doing is I'm working on uh, getting the valid dollars to render to a swing label. When I left off last time I had a failing test for that, and now I want to make a passing test. So I think this is going to be pretty straightforward, I just want to make sure that the um, label has the correct text on it. So. I should be able to say label dot set text. Come on. To um, this dot to string really. That should work. I also want to say that it has no icon. because I know that these, this renderer is going to be used over and over again, so I need to make sure that uh, it's reset properly. And actually, I have to, that should be a separate test. I should say, um, rendering should reset label to default state. So what I want to do there is I want the text, the foreground text to be black, um, the and the icon to be null and the tooltip to be null. Let's go ahead and promote this. To a setup method. For those of you who are flinching about me doing uh, putting swing stuff inside of a domain logic class, specifically a value object, um, please go watch the previous video, especially the last couple minutes, and comment on that video because I, that's where I talked about it and I'm sure some of you will be upset with that decision and um, will have some good points against it. I'd like to get all those, those uh, discussion points in the same spot. So please uh, comment on the previous video. So let's see, we're going to convert this to a field. There we go. Let's call that $20. Okay. So one of the things that indicates that this is the wrong spot for doing this, you know, to argue against myself, is that these tests are really nothing like the tests around them and they're requiring their own little bit of test infrastructure. That's a sign that maybe I've got too much going on in this class and I need to do an extract class. Um, so that, that would be a, a point in favor of, of not doing this. So let's see how it goes. Right now it doesn't feel too ugly to me, but um, we'll see what happens. So this should be Let's see. Label text should be should two string. There I go refactoring again when I shouldn't be. Well, technically I had a green bar, but that was really because this test isn't broken yet. Um, what I should do here as part of my setup, I should set the icon to something. Ooh, how am I going to do that? Um, Wow. I don't really want to set it 
you know, to a real icon out of a file, you generally don't want your test to to do that. Let's see. Well, I guess I can just make an empty image icon. See what happens. Good. Should not have icon. Perfect. So, we'll make sure it doesn't have an icon. And we also don't want it to have any um, tooltip. That should fail. And lastly, uh, we want the text to be black. Okay, expected that, so. There we go. All right, going really smoothly here. Okay, so next, rendering should resaw, um, Let's see. And let's say we want to render negative values in red. Okay, that should fail. Yep. Okay, that's working. And just to make this a little more um, explicit,
well, let's see. Um, yeah, we'll just Yeah, I like that. That's a little more clear, I think. And obviously the code's already working this way, so... Um, I didn't think it was strictly necessary, or it isn't strictly necessary, but I think it just makes, it acts as better documentation. So, there we go. So that's all working, I think. I think the next step is to go ahead and promote this method to dollars. And um, see if we can get it running uh, against, you know, our actual renderer. Because it's clearly not yet. We'd be seeing some negative values if it was. Um, also, invalid dollars doesn't have it yet. Yeah, before we put this here, uh, let's do invalid dollars. So invalid dollars is a little trickier because we want to do icons for it. Um, let me just do a quick spike to see if I'm on the right track. So I need to, let's see, I, I'm not 100% sure that what I'm doing here is going to work. It looks right, but I'm not 100% sure, and I don't want to spend a lot of time going down this road until I've proven that concept. So what I want to do is I want to go to our forecast table um, and just check it real quick. And this will be spike code. Um, boy, there's all kinds of stuff I have to do, though. Well, can I just... I'm, I'm going to see if I can just hack something in real quick to see if it's working. Let's just do some very ugly hard coding. Row equals one. Spike. Delete me. Um, this is very, very ugly. Hmm. You know, I don't even know how to spike this. I think, I think that's something I'll have to pick up next time. So. At least for now, it looks like we've got valid dollars working. It's a little hard to test, but uh, next time we'll look at that further. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you next time.